So you got into the epilogue, talked to Xana to figure out what mapping was, and then after doing her quest, you hit G to reveal all of this. And you probably did the same thing that I did, and looked at it and went, what the absolute hell am I looking at? And needless to say, it is not explained very well. Now they're doing some updates in Delve, the upcoming expansion, to explain how this works a little bit more in depth, but even so, with most of the videos that I've watched, I still didn't understand it. So we're going to break down the Atlas in as simple terms as possible to get you started. Now I haven't killed the ultimate end boss, I haven't killed the guardians, that sort of thing, so I'm going to put you on about as even ground as I am to get you rolling in the Atlas. So to make this even simpler, there's the Shaper and the Elder. Now one of those is black and one of those is white, I don't remember which one is which, so we're just going to call them black and white. It's that simple, that's what we're going to do. So when you first start off in uh, dealing with maps and dealing with the Atlas, you'll talk to Xana and you'll pick one of, uh, I believe, four maps. You can pick from any of the four corners of the map. You can start with a dungeon, you can start with a beach, you can start with a lookout, or you can start with a graveyard. Now, I generally start with the beach, and that's whatever. That'll decide which side you start working your way in from, and you can start clearing those maps. Because whenever you clear a map, there's a chance that it drops one tier higher, and then a couple of tiers lower from uh, where it's at. But if you clear a tier 1 map, it is almost guaranteed to get a tier 2 drop, and then you can start progressing through here. So, after you clear what would be your tier 1, I'm not going to show you up here because I'll explain that in a second. Uh, after you clear what would be your tier 1, you'll progress down to your tier 2 right here. You clear through your tier 2, and then you have a potential of getting a tier 3 here, maybe a tier 3 here, or a tier 3 here. So you could get any of the 3 to drop potentially, maybe you get another flooded mines to get another chance, or maybe you get another dungeon. And you can do that to keep progressing your way through here. Now, why would you want to do that? Because sometimes some of the maps will be affected by this black influence or this white influence. Now, those of you who are looking at your map won't see this white influence right here. Allow me to explain how to get this guy to show up, because that was my first question as well. You would see this on streamers' videos and all that sort of thing, and you'd just be like, all right, how do I get this guy to appear? I, I don't know how to do it. So, the reason that you actually start progressing your way through here is that wherever your uh, black influence has spawned is where you want to try and get to. Because if you clear a tier 6, notice how these are all tiered, right? We had our tier 2 up here, tier 3, tier 4, and then tier 6 right here, right? If you clear a tier 6 that is influenced with, like, uh, with, that is influenced with the uh, black influence right here, then our man will finally show up. But it has to be a tier 6 with the black influence, or otherwise it won't matter. If you just clear a tier 6, it won't make any difference whatsoever. So, uh, because of that, you want to make sure that you clear whatever that tier 6 is with the influence. Now, the reason that you unlock all of that is that so you can see what the maps are called. Because you can see right here, I can see what all of these maps are because I've completed them, right? But if we come over here, there is a map in here that I don't know. If I knew what it was by heart, then we'd be fine. But what this allows you to do is say you cleared your way up through here, and the one in front of you that you need to clear, like say Promenade, for example, right here, is the one that you need. Okay, well that's shaped, and that's say, say it was tier 6 to make our man show up. Then what you can do is if you're in a trade league, you can just go and buy the map. And then you buy the map, you clear it, he shows up, and then you're good to go. And you advance on to the next part of Zayna's quest. Uh, that is why you want to start clearing your way through things. Now, the more maps you do, the more potential that he just moves. So you have to try and get there extremely, extremely quickly. Or what I ended up doing was clearing into about tier 5, tier 6 on all of the corners until he finally moved to one of the sides and I was able to, to clear the tier 6 after like three or four hours ish of just mapping and rolling with it and then what ended up happening was after you clear that you'll get a i believe shaper's memory fragment and you can hand that into Zena, who will then put you on the next part of the quest which is equally confusing 
because now you get to start shaping maps and dealing with the white influence here. So what ends up happening is you'll notice how this uh, map here, this ghetto tier 13, has a blue circle around it. What this means is that if you clear this, the map boss will give you a shaper's memory fragment. Now you'll see I'm at 7 of 15 here. These are what, if I hit the right button, I apologize. Uh, these are what drop from these exact bosses and they allow you to increase the level of other maps. Now the reason that you're going to want to do that is to make it so that you can keep getting XP while doing your favorite maps. You can only upgrade them once but you can also make it so that other maps will not spawn while running that map. Don't worry, I know that sounds really confusing. Give me like a few minutes and we will cover everything as simply as humanly possible. What we're going to cover for the moment is how these two interact with each other. So you have seen beforehand that this guy likes to move and the black influence likes to move. Now you can somewhat control where they end up going. Because if you want to move, say, this map over a tier 15 or something, um, or over this tier 14, because you need a tier 14 clear that has uh, a little bit of blue influ influence here, you can clear out the black influence, go into this tier 14 map, and if you clear this, he will then take it over. So what you can do then is you can force where you want him to go. So if you want a memory fragment from a tier 14, you move him up there, then you clear the 13, and then maybe it rolls onto this side and you can go and get that one instead. You can start manually moving this, uh, this kind of weird tentacle thing uh, whichever way you want. Now the reason that you do that aside from getting memory fragments is to either move him away from what you are clearing to make whatever you're clearing easier or to get certain types of items. If we look in my stash right here You'll see that I have a wand with the um, the black little background here, and it will have different bonuses to it. Taking a look at this wand, we can see that it has become a pseudo five link. It has elemental damage with attacks, as well as it has faster casting. Now you can't get these on any other type of wand. You have to get a pair of elder or shaper, black or white items. So you can see that my other item up here, my shield, also has uh, bonuses that aren't really achievable from uh, normal types of rolls. So clearing out those types of maps can give you very, very unique items that are uh, unobtainable anywhere else. That is the main reason to run these types of maps. Now, with that being said, we're going to cover shaping maps. This is a very weird concept that is it starts off confusing, but after a few explanations, it becomes extremely, extremely simple. So, of course, I told you about the, uh, the circle right here. But if we were to go and clear this tier 13 circle, it would allow me another shaper's uh, fragment. Now, if you come up here and you see my beach is a shaped tier 6. Now, beaches start at level 1. What ended up happening is when you clear your tier 6, you get a level one shaper's orb. So what you can do is if you clear that tier six and use that orb anywhere on one of the maps, you can use them on your tier one maps, right? So I could have used it on dungeon, I could have used it on graveyard, and I could have used it on lookout, right? So I decided to use it on beach because it was fast and one I enjoyed. And now it becomes a tier six map instead of a tier one map. So as a result, now beach is out of the level one pool. So if you go and clear a level one map, so you clear a dungeon, for example, then all that can drop, as opposed to uh, beach, you can get a dungeon tier one, you can get a graveyard tier one, and you can get a lookout tier one, right? You can't get a beach tier one because your beach is not level six, right? So now you can limit down the pool. So that is how you can kind of start forcing um, one to drop itself. If you move the influence onto the lower tier maps, so if you move it back onto a tier six, and it gets the circle, you clear that tier 6, and then you get another Shaper's Orb, right? So then we take that, and we throw that on, say, Lookout. Lookout becomes a tier 6. Say you're farming level 1s, for example, for whatever reason, and you wanted to lock them out. Now, if you clear level 1 maps, you can only get a drop of Dungeon or of Graveyard. And this applies to all of the other spots as well. 
Now, the reason that people like to shape certain maps is, of course, because they give you higher amounts of experience. A lot of people shape maps that have really good rewards, like Burial Chambers, for example. So at Tier 8, it still gives you average-ish experience, depending on how high of a level you go to. But what ends up happening is, because of that, you can not only get good loot uh, and potentially good rewards, but you can keep progressing your character, too, farther than what ends up happening if you're doing a Tier 3. So, what people do is they shape their burial chambers up to tier 8. And then you go and you clear the uh, the blue circle map after moving him down to whatever tier it was. I don't remember exactly what tier it was to be able to shape 8. Uh, I think it was either 12 or maybe 13. I think it might have been 12. Um, then you can shape up the burial chambers. So, what you do is you move it down to whatever tier that is. And make sure you can clear that again with the blue circle. Then you get a second orb. Now you want to shape out whatever is currently tier 8. So we see that this is tier 8. So if we come over here, for example, we look for a tier 8. Alright, armory. That's a tier 8. So what ends up happening is say you were to clear burial chambers and it drops a map inside of uh, the burial chambers. It could drop itself, it could drop an armory, it could drop whatever else is in front of it. So say, um, it could maybe drop relic chambers, it could maybe drop toxic sewers, um, that sort of thing, right? Or I don't think it can drop what's in front of it, it'll drop what's on its level, or on, around its level. Sorry about that part. Um, so it could drop a bone crypt to go up a level, or it could go down maybe a level or two and drop, I don't know, maybe something at tier 6, right? Maybe it could drop an academy. So what you can do is if you want to have only burial chambers drop, you shape your burial chambers up to tier 8, and you shape out everything else that is tier 8. So we'll do a little bit of a look around, and uh, not that one. Mud Geyser is tier 8, right? So you can throw on the eventual tier 8 orb that you get from clearing higher up blue circles, right here. And you can put it on this. So this no longer is tier 8 after you shape it. Just keep in mind, this leveled it up, right? So then this ends up becoming from a tier 8 up to, say, like a tier 13. So now when you clear burial chambers, it can't drop a mud geyser anymore. And you go around and you do that for all of the tier 8s, all of the tier 9s, and all of the tier 7s, right? So now when you do burial chambers, for example, it will only drop itself. Because everything else around it has been shaped out up to a higher tier. So you clear a tier 8 burial chambers, and it drops a burial chambers every single time. Because it limits the role to, when it hits maps, it doesn't have to choose between Burial Chambers, Armory, Mud or mud Geyser, all this other stuff, Academy, that sort of thing. It only has one choice, which is Burial Chambers. This is how to make it work for efficient farming runs. It has a lot of setup and is generally done at the start of a league to make your league worthwhile. Uh, another use for this sort of system is to help yourself level up extremely, extremely quickly. Because me personally, I like doing Ash and Wood. It is a really fast, efficient, clear map. But it's tier 11, right? When it's shaped, it's tier 6 by default. So I have this shaped up to tier 11. So what I can do is I can shape out all of the other tier 11s and move them up even higher. And then I can only have Ash and Wood drop itself, right? You can see this becomes easier and easier the farther in you go because there is less and less of the same uh, map as things go around. You have 14 there, you have 12 there, right? 14, 14 there. As opposed to three branching paths, once you hit a tier two, you start locking it down to maybe two branching paths per map. So it is still a lot of setup, but you can kind of see the way to create your own maps that are still on level and able to give you XP while uh, being able to farm the maps that you want to farm and have them drop itself. Now, I know that was probably very, very confusing. I'm still working at it myself to try and understand um, the full intricacies of it and how to explain it a little bit simpler, I guess. But um, watching this video back a second time may potentially help you even more. I had to look at things a decent amount of times and I looked at all of the websites and that sort of things, and there was a giant chart, and that was the way it explained it, it was just a gigantic chart. 
So I wanted to try and simplify things a little more. I hope I did. If I didn't, let me know in the comments below and I will redo this video and try my absolute best to make this a little bit better. That's going to be all for me. And as always, take care, lads. So have it if you say just